Hey guys, Kellen back here with Inside Out Precision and I've been getting a lot of uh, messages on Instagram and YouTube about what equipment do I personally run. I've been doing a lot of gear reviews, but I don't think I've actually gone over what I'm personally running. So today I'm gonna go over my target setup um, and kind of give you an idea of, of what I'm using and why I'm using it. So uh, the bow is a Matthews Halon X. Uh, this bow actually came out, gosh, I think three years ago now. Um, it's actually still in their lineup. And what I like about this bow is it's kind of a great combo between, um, you know, a target bow and one that I, somebody could use for hunting as well. So this bow is 35 inches axle to axle. So a little bit longer than your average target bow. You know, most are going to be in that 37 to 40. Uh, but definitely longer than your average hunting bow, which is usually in that, you know, 30 to 33 range. Um, so great combo of both, you know, it's got a six and three quarter inch brace height and they get IBOs at like, like 330 feet a second. So it's pretty, pretty fast bow, especially you get a good lightweight arrow for outdoor and you maintain some really good speed with it. Um, I have this set at 29 and five eighths inch drawing. So I have the 29 and a half inch mods on there. Um, and then I, I just put about one and a half turns in each cable to get that little bit of extra draw length. Um, I've also got my loop on here that's running about three quarters and I tie above and below the knock. Um, we're gonna do a bow build in a, a week or so here. One of my students is getting a new Hoyt target bow and we're gonna go start to finish and do a whole bow build and I'll show you how I tie in knocks or how I tie in my loop and you know how we're gonna set everything up. but. We'll focus more on the equipment side of things today. So uh, for a site, I'm running the Trueball XL. Uh, this is the, um, the Achieve CX. So this is their most basic model. It has the aluminum rail here versus most of their new ones have the carbon ones. Um, when I was putting this bow together, you know, I wanted something that would shoot well, but that I wasn't gonna spend all my savings on at the time. Um, I've had all this stuff for, I think this is going on, this will be the third year that I've been shooting it. You know, sights, there's a lot of good sights out there, in my opinion, kind of either they work or they don't. There's some small features that, that I like to pay attention to. On this particular sight, um, I really like the unmounting system, the little dovetail thing here for my scope. So I can just pop that on and off when I'm traveling with it. It's really easy, quick. It's got a secure, secure lock there. Um, Obviously all your micro adjustability up and down and your windage here. And then like most scopes nowadays, it's also got this bottom on the, on the bottom of the, the slider mount here, where if I press that, then I can do like rapid adjustment up and down. So if I need to go from like, you know, five to 80 yards, I don't have to sit there and click it a hundredth of an inch at a time. Um, I'm running the AV 31 scope. Um, they make a, a 41 as well, which is a lot bigger. And then they make a 25, which is smaller. Generally speaking, uh, the 31 is kind of best of both worlds. I still get a good sight picture. So if I'm shooting 3D, I can still see the outline of the animal. Um, and then, it, which helps you on like a really dark target. Let's say I'm shooting a bear that's back in the shadows. If, if all I have is foam and I can't see the outside of that animal at all, um, I'm, it's just going to be black in my scope and I won't have any references to where my pin is relative to, to the rest of the animal. So it's nice to be able to get a little bigger sight picture. Um, if I was going to set one up for just 3d, I'd probably run the 41, which is the bigger scope. Uh, but for indoor, I like just having the single, whatever spot it is I'm shooting. That's the only thing I want to see in my scope. I don't want to see the other two or three or five dots or whatever, whatever the target face you're shooting is. So I'm running the, yeah, the 31. I've got a four power lens in there. I do not shoot a clarifier. So the target is, the target is clear. It's not, it's not crystal clear. Um, you know, a half power, half power clarifier and your peep will really clear that target up. And then depending on where, how far out you run your bar here, that will also determine a little bit of the magnification. You know, the further out it goes, it's going to appear to magnify it a little bit more. Um, and then you'll also see a little more movement in your sight the further out it goes. So, you know, if you shoot a lot and you're holding really steady, it's really responsive that way. Whereas if it's closer to your bow, you're not gonna see quite as much movement. Target's not gonna be quite as clear, not quite as much magnification. So I have this on the second to last hole run all the way out there. Um, going to my rest, I actually just installed this one. I was shooting the Spot Hog uh, Infinity for a long time, which is just a true blade style rest. 
Um, I'm now running the Hamski. This is the Hybrid Target Pro. So it's a limb driven drop away rest. So it connects to my bottom limb here. And what I really like about these ham skis is that they're, they're very, very adjustable, um, both in, in your windage and elevation, they're micro adjustable. But then the biggest thing for me is that I can adjust the spring tension in the, in the lever here. So if I'm shooting, um, really, really light outdoor arrows, I can adjust that spring tension a little lighter if I'm shooting, like right now I'm shooting the X 27s for indoor. Um, I can adjust that a little bit. Um, make it a little bit heavier so I'm not getting any, you know, chatter or bounce when that arrow shoots. Um, and they come with a bunch of different launcher arms. This is just your standard, the target launcher arm. Um, you know, it's wide enough to where when I'm shooting my fat arrows, it's never going to fall off of there. The little blade rests, you know, if you're nervous and you're shaking a little bit, it might fall off the rest and then you got to try and, you know, pick it back up with your finger and stick it on there. It's just kind of disrupts your shot process. So I'm running that. Um, you can also really just the speed of this. So I, you know, I've got this set right now between the where it mounts on my limb and, and the tension in this cord. Um, as soon as I start pulling that string, that rest starts picking up. And then when I shoot, it stays up until probably when I had this on the Hooter shooter, my string was like all the way here before it started dropping out of the way. So I'm still getting all the stability of a blade style rest yet still getting full clearance of a drop away. So it's a really, really cool rest. They just came out with their Trinity series as well, which is awesome. It's got a triple ball bearing system. The carriage is a little bit different. Really, really smooth, quiet rest. Um, for my stabilizers, I'm running, these are actually, gosh, I think three or four years old now. These are the Bee Stinger Premiers. Um, at the time, this was their top quality bar. They've actually come out with a lot of bars since. They have the Micro Hex now, which is smaller diameter, stiffer carbon, just an overall upgrade. Um, I'm running six ounces on the front and 18 on the back. So about a one to three ratio, which is, it's a little heavier in the back than what we call a, a zero balance. Um, if you caught our stabilizer video early on, I talk about the equation that you can use to achieve what's called a zero balance where that bow just wants to, it'll sit perfectly steady. This is about an ounce and a half over a zero balance on, on the back here, but it holds really well. Um, I'm just starting to really get into a practice routine for outdoor season coming up. I didn't shoot indoor as much as I would have liked. Um, and you know, ideally I'd like to get that weight up to probably eight or nine on the front and you know, 20 to 22 on the back. I'm just gonna have to play around with that. But for right now, it's just too much physical weight. And I find myself, you know, my hold, that bow starts to feel real heavy after, you know, four or five seconds of full draw. So I'm working my way up, but right now this is holding really well for me. Um, I have, these are the, I have the 85% mods on here. I actually prefer the 75s, but we had a guy in the shop a couple months ago that was looking for 75s and we didn't have any except the ones that were on my bow. So I gave him those and put these on. Um, really going above and beyond for our customers there. <laughs> but, but I do like the 75% for target shooter. I, I like having the responsiveness. You know, if I come out of that back wall, I want the, the cam to tell me that I'm coming out of the back wall. Um, a lot of these bows now with the 85, you know, some of the PACs have 90% let off on their hunting models. And you can ease up that pressure a lot in the back wall. And there's such a deep valley there that that, that cam's not gonna wanna pull forward on you, but it will affect your elevation at, uh, at the target. Um, if you come out of that back wall a little bit, usually you're going to shoot a little bit high. Um, you know, if I just ease up on the pressure, if the cam doesn't rotate forward, but I ease up on the pressure, you'll usually come out a little bit low. So I want a cam that's going to be really responsive and tell me, you know, I can kind of judge where, what I'm doing based on where I'm missing. So I prefer the 75% mods. When you do the math, they actually come out to about 68%. Um, but for right now, I've been shooting with the 85s and you know, it's, I'm more focused on shot execution right now than, than scoring. Um, I'm running, these are, uh, these are winner's choice strings. I actually got two sets of them when I ordered the, the first set by accident, they got double ordered. Um, great strings. Haven't had any issues with them. Um, I'm pulling right at 59 pounds with this. Uh, so I, I maxed it out and then took like half a turn out of each limb bolt. I'll, obviously, because I over-rotated these cams a little bit to get the draw length where I wanted it, uh, it's actually maxing out at about 62 pounds. Um, any USA sanctioned archery events, you're going to be right at 60 pounds. So a lot of guys will set their bow at like 
you know, 59 or 58 and a half so that if there's any discrepancy in the, uh, the scale that they use at the tournaments, you know, they're most likely going to be, be coming in under right at 60 or, or just a hair under. Um, so really cool thing. One thing that I recently upgraded is the grip on this. So this is the, this is the grip that ultra view archery makes. Uh, one of George Ryle's kids is just really cool kid or kid. I say kid. He's like, you know, early mid twenties. Um, but he started a company called UltraView. They made all these grips on a 3D printer. And what's cool about these, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but this little insert here, this honeycomb part will pull on and off of this other piece here. And you can change the angle of your grip. So I got, this is the low. It also came with the medium, which is a little more high wrist. And I've played around with both of them. With this particular bow, I like the low. Um, you know, I don't... I don't shoot a ton of heel pressure. My hand isn't completely flat. I, I have a fairly fairly even amount of pressure, I'd say. Um, and the low, the low grip with this seems to be just about right. Um, but it's really nice. It's got a good, you know, narrow, flat back on it. So if you're not right in the same spot, you're gonna know it. And it's got a really nice deep valley here. So my hand's not gonna slip up into the shelf, which I've talked about in earlier videos. So yeah, um, I'm running a 12 inch back bar, 30 inch front bar. Uh, just a really nice forgiving setup. Again, it's kind of, if I was gonna have just, you know, if I was gonna have a target bow that was just gonna be indoor, I'd go a little bit longer, um, but I kind of wanted a bow that I could do everything with. So I can, you know, I can, this is fast enough. I can run 3D with it. Um, it holds well enough that I can, you know, I can shoot indoor and field and stuff and, and feel really confident with it. So again, Halon X. Um, if you haven't shot one, come down to the shop, um, you know, try one out. They, they're a great bow, a uh, little different cam system, a little smaller cam than like on the, the other Halon series. So this is the, uh, oh, what do they call this? The, the MCC instead of the CC series. So like on the Halon 32, it's the CC2. This is the MCC. They do take a different mod than the other Halons. Um, but yeah. Hopefully that answers a few questions about, uh, about what I'm running. I'm also running, this is a, my hinge release. This is a Scott black hole. This is a three finger. I actually don't know if they make this one anymore. This is from about 2008, but I have like three of them. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's the super simple mechanism in the head here. Uh, it, there's no springs or rubber bands or anything in there that's going to wear out or break on me. So, you know, I can replace parts for it if I need to, and there's just nothing that can really go wrong with it. You can shoot it with a click or without a click. I personally shoot it without a click. Um, I find that, you know, in a little bit of a nervous situation, and maybe it's just because I haven't tried the click enough, but I find I'm pulling through and I hit the click and I get this little bobble, this little like, ooh, like I feel like the shot's about to break and it, it, it slows me down in my shot process. So I've got this set fairly slow to where, you know, I know that if I draw with my thumb peg, this release is not going to go off. And then once I get in, I, you know, relax that hand a little bit and those fingers roll back and then I'm rolling through my shot. Um, I'm running a X27 as well. This is Easton. I'm running a four fletch on it. Um, every tournament in the world has been one with three fletches for a long time. Uh, but with a drop away like this, I'm going to get, I'm not going to have any contact issues running a four fletch. And I figure with a really heavy arrow like this, this arrow weighs like 740 something grains. It's a 300 grain point and it's cut at 31 inches. Um, and you know, when I bare shafted with these, I got them, I played around with the length and this is where it ended up. Um, 300 grains up front, 31 inches. And out of my bow, you know, they're, they're touching, they're a perfect hole through paper and then they're touching at 20 yards. So I actually have a post on Instagram about that if you go check it out. Um, but with a big heavy arrow like this, I think the four fletch, it just creates a little more drag right out of the gate. And with an arrow this heavy, you know, if it starts moving one way, it's going to want to keep going that way just because of the weight. So I think having something that really stabilizes that arrow quickly can't hurt. Um, I think I could have easily gone with like a five inch feather as well. Um, but I thought I'd give this a try. So far, they've been flying great. I've had really good luck with them. Um, you know, it's a really forgiving shaft. Even when I make a pretty dumb shot, it doesn't punish me too bad. So, uh, you know, the only downside to the big heavy aluminum ones is that they don't get out of the bow quite as quickly. Um, some of the newer carbon shafts, you know, they're gonna be in that maybe 450 to 500 grain, which is still a, a, 
a heavy arrow, but not nearly as heavy as this, and they, they get out of the bow a lot faster, which I think there's something to be said for. I think the faster that arrow gets out the bow, you know, just the less time I'm gonna have to screw something up as a shooter. Uh, most of your, your torque and everything is gonna come, you know, or if you drop out, it's gonna come in that last, last few inches of the draw cycle or the shot cycle of your cam. So if that arrow, you know, is out of there just a fraction of a second quicker, you're not gonna have as much time to affect it. So I think I'm gonna try the, actually I have some SuperDrive 27s on order that I'm gonna play around with for next season. Um, and I have some Easton Pro Comps, which is their new outdoor arrow that should be here hopefully in March. And I'm gonna get those rolling for outdoor season. So anyway, uh, hope that answers some of your questions. If you do have any more questions on my equipment, feel free to, to shoot me a question on either direct message me on Instagram or comment on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, there's a million different things out there. <laughs> there's, I'm not, again, I'm not here to tell you what's, what's right and what's wrong. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I use and what I've seen guys be successful with. So, um, hopefully that helps. Remember hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and precision is your decision and keep them inside out.